go to work. Woo! Hey, y'all better practice fast today too now. This ain't no, no dress rehearsal walkthrough. You, know, you can tell he's very determined and very motivated to do what he has planned. You know, his motor is always going. A lot of times he's just out there having fun, but he, he pushes us, he pushes us to practice hard and, and work hard. When you're running, you're closing the distance, look through him, but keep your arms moving, because that's always, that swat down is always going to get it, right? Here we go! All of the energy and enthusiasm that you saw today, that has been his trademark from day one. Yes, sir! Today I'm looking at looking at all your motions and stuff like that. Okay. Make sure you ain't getting happy feet. It, you know, it's a chance to interact and um, you know, and just bring into into light that we're trying to take care of these guys from all aspects, on the field and off the field. Took a selfie? Did you? <laughs> you took a selfie. It's always neat to just to have uh, kind of a conversation back and forth with players where they feel like you know, coach is not a deity and coach is not a tyrant. I mean, coach is a, is a real person. In a profession noted for its icons, Mike London's humanity has served as a calling card during his time as a head coach. Fans and recruits across Virginia have been endeared by his relational style, an approach that brought a national championship to the University of Richmond in 2008 and energized UVA's program a year ago. And while he's patrolled the sidelines as a coach for nearly 25 years, many characteristics of his distinctive philosophy date back to his years patrolling the streets of Richmond as a police officer. He looked the role and he played the role. To me, Mike London would fit in and did fit in everywhere he went. And whatever assignment he was given, he was dedicated to doing that assignment. We became partners uh, roughly around 1986. It would be nothing out of the norm to have shootings going on day in and day out. Drug activity going on day in and day out. The city of Richmond, we led the nation per capita in homicides. You know, there's been plenty of times you, you get in a foot pursuit and you're chasing after guys or right before you serve a search warrant you kick the door in and, and just know that, you know, your heightened sense of ability and awareness has to be on point. You know, I kind of like those kind of experiences. Well, they, they used to call us Batman and Robin. Yeah, and they called us Batman and Robin because we were very aggressive. And in the street crimes unit, we investigated everything. We investigated everything from robberies, to sex crimes, to homicides, to prostitution, to drug violations. And uh, we were always in, in plain clothes, uh, always undercover. Yeah, there, there, there are a lot of moments where, you know, you, you wake up in the morning and you know you're going to work. And because of the type of work that you do, all you want to do is just make it back home another, another evening. You cannot be a police officer and be afraid to die on a, on a daily basis with the criminals that we dealt with. Because we dealt with high profile criminals, career criminals. So on a daily basis, uh, our lives were on, on the line. Of all Mike and Craig's dangerous encounters, one, clearly stands out above the rest. That was a night to remember. And, and, and I know it is a, I mean, it was a tough one for me, but I know for Mike, uh, it was something he's gonna remember for the rest of his life. One evening, a call went out to the Kentucky Fried Chicken store, had gotten robbed, this was late, late at night. And uh, after robbery comes in, they give a description of the vehicle. It was a van, I believe it was a brown colored van, some posture tags were uh, given. And lo and behold, as fate would have it, no traffic either way, at that light, we're sitting right behind that van. I went out over the radio to radio the other guys in the units to know that we were following a van that fit the description and to come for backup. However, uh, as we have it, 
before backup came to us, they pulled off in a residential area. Obviously the van would know that they make a left, we make a left. They turn, you know, we're falling behind them. They turn into a driveway and, and, and turn in and turn pulling back out, facing back out towards the street. We turn in right behind them. But we don't want them to get out of the vehicle because we don't, number one, we don't know how many people are in the vehicle. One, two, or four, you know? So uh, Mike and I make the decision to approach it. We get out, um, you know, guns, badges drawn, we're in plain clothes, approach the van, approach the vehicle. So uh, Mike approaches the driver's side, and as soon as he gets to the window, Mike hollers out, Craig, he has a weapon, he got a gun. The driver guns the engine and, and tries to, you know, tries to speed out of there. And so um, I jump into the driver's door, side struggle with the, the steering wheel. And as we're doing that, you know, he points a revolver at me and, and uh, I'm looking down the barrel of what looked like a bazooka and pulls the trigger. For a moment in time, you know, time stops, everything stops. The guy had the gun on Mike, and there's nothing but the grace of God. The guy pulled the trigger, but the gun didn't go off. And at that time, I'm like, Whew. it doesn't really sink in until you go home that night and the next day. That you really internalize and say, I really shouldn't be here. I should be dead. Whatever, mis jammed, nothing in the chamber, or whatever. I, I have no idea to this day. I just know that I'm, uh, uh, you know, that, that by the blessings of God that I'm standing here, sitting here talking to you right now. Despite the close call, London returned to his patrol immediately. But it wouldn't be for long. Several months after the incident, Mike left the Richmond PD to accept an assistant coaching position at the University of Richmond. Earlier this summer, Mike and Craig returned to Richmond for one more patrol and their first face-to-face -face meeting in nearly 20 years. The number one rule was safety, number two safety, and number three safety. Poverty, this is what it looks like. See right here, this is the battleground right here. This was one, one of our major areas of patrol when we were in uniform. When the homicide rate was high, the majority of those homicides occurred here, right here. And uh, not, not, to, not to scare you anything, Alex, but you, you shining that camera while we're rolling down the <laughs> rolling down the road right here with some of these lookouts and people standing out in the corner, you know, you best believe that everybody knows that we're, uh, they don't know yet, they don't know what quite we are yet, but they, they know something different is going on. We followed the worst of what human beings were in around at that, at that time. Name it, we've seen it, seen it all. And so if you don't have a, a good sounding board or a good partner or, or somebody, you know, get, get your back and stuff like that. Sometimes smack you back into the reality of, listen, man, that's not you. That's not your fate. And I've had friends that, that have swallowed the barrel of a gun because they couldn't, they couldn't handle that. Couldn't make the transition from what they do day to day or night to night and then go home and be a father or a husband. They couldn't make that transition, so they, they swallow a bullet. I think we're coming up on the area here to see. This is this is the south side. When the call came out, that Craig, we were sitting right we at a light. We we're sitting right behind the, the van. We need to go up there and yeah, take the left at this light right here. Cause all this stuff oh, looked so familiar. Yeah, Worthington, yeah. Worthington. Yeah, this is it. Worthington. Wait. I remember that the street Worthington was right, right over here. This looked familiar right here. 
because it was a house right there, a house right there, and it had a big open field. I, I think that's it. It brings back, uh, you know, a surreal memory. They had came back around and facing up and um, struggling with the driver. And I remember him, you know, pressing the gas and the back of the car just kind of fishtailing, trying to get out. And then I remember seeing the gun being pulled and then the, the trigger being pulled, you know? I mean, him pulling the trigger and hearing that click sound. It's one of those things that defines defines your life, defines the course of your life, changes maybe a destiny for some good reason, great reason. Um, nothing bad happened that day. Aside from reuniting with his old partner, London's trip also allowed him a chance to reminisce with several of his classmates from the police academy and speak to a gathering of current patrolmen. You know, outside of being an NFL player, the next thing I wanted to do was be a police officer, and I have a tremendous amount of respect for, for what you guys do in uniform. We look at him and we're, everybody's proud of him. Everybody's proud of what he's accomplished uh, because he did have a great career here as well, even though it was short. And again, he has that story to tell. He comes back and he tells you about that and then he tells you how he got to where he is now. Uh, it really means a lot to us. So it, it is, it's always good for him to come back and be able to talk to our folks uh, in our department. Stretch, here we go! So he takes these qualities from our law enforcement background and brings them to kids that's playing college football to make sure that they stay in the right path. All it takes is just one, right? Just take one, one time, one, one, one great decision, one, one open door opportunity to change the whole fortune of things. Okay, so keep on keeping on, all right, man? Okay. He reminds us that we're not uh, promised tomorrow, athletically or even in life, and that's really his menta mentality, and it carries through the whole program. It was something that uh, if I had to do it again, I would, I would, I would choose that, that route and that profession because I think it kind of molded, molded and shaped me. Then you come here in a college setting with young men that are coming from all over, then at least there's some training, you know, with all that having been done. And that's been the best thing about all this is, uh, is my one-on-one my -on -one interactions with the players. We don't talk about football, we talk about life. And those are the things that are important.